Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm fishing on the wonderful River Wye today in Hereford. The river's about five and a half foot up, which can be quite challenging when you're looking to fish a float on a river, certainly a powerful river like this River Wye. And the tactics I'm going to use today is stick float fishing. I've already started to catch a few nice roach, so it's really looking like it's going to be a fantastic session. That's the sort of roach I'm talking about, caught on a stick float. Absolutely beautiful. Well, the River Way at Hereford this year has been absolutely exceptional. On our winter leagues, it's been the best fishing that really anybody can remember. I've been fishing the river for 20 years and it's just the sheer volume of fish that are in the stretch this year. Um, I fished the winter league yesterday and I drew up on peg 28 and had just under 30 pound of dace. But the match was actually won by Dave Roberts on this peg with something like 67 pounds of roach. So it's absolutely fishing out of its skin. And the river's quite high, as you can see, there's actually just under six foot of water on today. And um, I suppose that could be quite daunting really. And particularly when you think of perhaps normal rivers, the last thing you'd be doing is fishing with a stick float. But because the fishing is so prolific here, it's enabling great bags of fish to be caught on the stick float and really it's probably, along with the pole to hand, one of the most efficient ways of putting together a big bag of fish, certainly a big bag of roach like what Dave had yesterday. Well the peg is number 93 here on the Belmont stretch at Hereford and it's an interesting peg which you soon discover when you plumb up because the peg shallows up, it shallows up quite dramatically at the bottom of the peg, just above 94. And above the peg, so below 92, it's a lot deeper. And um, I think it's that feature that holds the shoals of roach here, particularly at this height. They perhaps get forced down and shelter around about that ledge and where it shallows up. Anyway, um, as it proved yesterday with Dave Roberts on the Winter League, it's a great peg. And, Woody confirmed that when I spoke to him this morning and it's always worth, worth speaking to Woody just to get some local knowledge and understand what pegs are fishing in the different conditions. So I mentioned that the river's up and pushing hard and the great advantage of fishing a stick float like this is I can fish and present my bait very effectively, very close to the bank and that's where typically you catch the roach, certainly the big roach in these conditions. So I've set two different stick floats at which we'll talk about, two different rigs. And the first thing to do really at the beginning of the session is just familiarize yourself with the contours of the pegs. Try and see if there's a, any snags in there that you need to avoid. And then secondly, work out your feeding and where the bulk of the fish are gonna be actually situated in your peg. So, I mean, it's just fishing absolutely amazingly. I'm catching a fish a chuck really, I'm getting a good amount of good sized dace at the moment. And obviously in a match, you'd be really just trying to catch everything you can, but I'd like to try and target the roach today, certainly the bigger roach. So the, the way I'm feeding it is I've decided 
certainly at the start, I've cut out ground bait. I'm just loose feeding maggots, hemp and casters. And I'm feeding really tight to the bank. Because a lot of the time on the Y, um, that's where the big roach will be hanging out. They'll be just hanging out either right next to the bank where they've got some cover when the river's low and clear, or on a day like this, it's just kind of on the crease between the main flow and the slack of water that's down the side. So if you do have a look out at the river, you can see even just a rod length or two rod lengths out, the river's really powerful and pacey. And I'm, I'm not saying you wouldn't catch out there, you would, that's for sure. Even That's the amazing thing about the Y. But if, you, if you're feeding two lines, you've obviously got to bring a, a tremendous amount of bait. And um, I'm only really using the leftovers from yesterday's match. So I'm still feeding quite heavily, but I'm feeding right close in the margins. And that was something that Chappie picked up on. And my thinking there is, obviously the margins down the side are the slackest areas. And you can actually see those maggots um, are sinking well in that slower water. It's still quite turbulent, so they're turning up and sort of almost rolling down the peg. But the fact that I'm fishing close to the bank is gonna hopefully encourage the fish to feed close into the bank and where I can catch them very efficiently. And as a match angler, obviously that's what you're looking for. You're looking to feed and present your bait in the most efficient way possible. But it's also relevant to pleasure anglers because when the river is up like this, you've got to be able to feed the peg effectively and catch the fish in the easiest way. Well, it's turning into a really interesting session. My peg's absolutely rigid with dace. And um, I caught some nice early roach, and I'm still getting the odd one. But at the moment, I'm just trying to work out how to avoid the dace. And that's a crazy thing to say, because they're, they're good quality dace. It's quite a miserable day as well. We're getting some quite heavy rain showers. And... Um, I think that's making filming a bit difficult, but uh, we've got a nice window of weather again now. It's just like there's an absolute mass of dace out there, and pretty much wherever I run the float, whatever kind of presentation, depth or shotting pattern, I'm getting them. Bait-wise, I've been switching between maggots and casters and Maggots have probably been better just uh, fishing three maggots on a size 16 hook at the moment. And um, obviously when you're catching so many fish, you can afford to fish a bit heavier and bigger hooks and bigger baits. If I was really catching, then I think I'd even consider fishing a, a 14. Well, the, the hook I'm using is a Census 3180. 
and they're a big hook. So that's a size 16, really, in my mind, that's a 14. Um, and I'd say I will use the, an even bigger hook if I'm really catching well and catching some big roach and dace. It's a lovely hook, it's very, very sharp and very, very strong for its gauge. You can actually see there that I've hooked all the maggots through the pointed end. Um, and my thinking there is, I just don't, I want to try to discourage the maggots from doubling over. And I find if I hook them through the fat end, I get that happen a lot more. And as you can see, it doesn't seem to distract from the maggots. They're still alive and they're still well wriggling. Well, this float I'm fishing is a 12 number four stick float. And I don't know if Chappie managed to get the bite then, but I'm actually fishing this float a little bit over depth. I've got a bulk just a bit lower down than halfway. And um, really, I'm, I'm trying to get through the dace. The dace are up in the water. And um, I mean, look at the quality of them. That's not even a big one for some of the ones we've had today. They're absolute clonkers. But the bites themselves are, are really pos positive, almost unmissable, really. We've got quite a strong downstream wind, so I am casting the float slightly downstream to help with presentation. But because I'm fishing over depth, I'm holding the float back and flapping the hook bait at the fish. So this is just a small dace. But um, it's a method that can work really well, particularly when you're fishing close in like this and you're fishing tight to the bank. Because sometimes you've got a lot of debris and snags on the bottom and you need to actually almost lift your hook bait over the snags and let it go down. And obviously I think that's where a lot of the fish are going to be sheltering when you're fishing in a, a situation where you've got a high river level like today. So I'll just try a little bit closer in and I'll hold back. So I'll be fishing now a couple of foot over depth and just see if we can't get a fish. There you go. I don't think that's a roach. Another good dace. The, the pegs just absolutely swarm in with fish and it, it's a... Uh, oh, it is a roach. Just try and swing it past Monty. Hey, Mont. There we go. So that's got to be a six ounce roach and it's got a scar on him from something there. So the way this river's fishing at the moment, it's, it's challenging. Not in a way of how to catch the fish, more how to select the, the stamp of fish and the fish that you want to catch. So I suppose if I was fishing a match today, I'd be having spells in the match where I was really targeting the dace and I'd probably try catching them on a pole to hand, bait dropping maggots or using lots of ground bait. And then I might have a spell trying to catch the bigger roach like this on a stick float or even a fishing over depth with a flat float and trying to catch them that way. It's so interesting and such a variety of methods need to be employed during the session. And that is another fish. Oh, it's come off. I'll leave that one. Well, Chappie's just picked up again on actually how close I'm catching today. And um, I suppose if you don't fish rivers a lot, it's definitely worth remembering because I suppose like on commercials or any lakes where you do catch in the margin, sometimes that's the place the fish want to be. So apart from making it easier to fish, it's where the majority of the fish are going to be holding out in your peg. Obviously, if it was low and clear, the fish would be easily spooked and the fish might be then further out in the river and you'd have to follow them out. But this extra, extra flow and extra depth and also a bit of colour in the water really gives great confidence for the fish and they can really hug the bank. Line control when you're trotting a float like this stick float is so critical. And there's a variety of different ways of doing it. But today, the river's really pacey. And the way I'm doing it is I'm just simply trapping the line with my finger and using the rod to adjust the speed of the float and then sweep the rod back again, trap the line and 
hit a bike like that. But um, you know, if the if the river wasn't as pacey, then you can let the line go to a certain extent and then control it every so often by mending the line. But today, you need to really control the float all the way down the peg. What's fascinating is, I'm actually feeding quite a lot of bait and I don't think any bait is getting past the fish. It's just alive with fish, this peg. And I don't think it would matter how much bait I was feeding. I don't think you could overfeed it. So, in my mind, I'm just trying to work out how I can perhaps target the better fish like the bigger roach. And what I might do in a bit is just try bait dropper in maggots in to get them hard on the bottom and then ease my float over the top of that. But you can see how I'm controlling this float now by just stopping the line and using the rod almost as an extension of my arm to control the float perfectly. Quite quickly on a session like this, you can work out where the main catching or killing zone is for the fish. And that's obviously where they're intercepting the loose feed and really congregating. And today it's literally, it's just a rod or two below where I'm feeding. And um, I've tried running down my peg because on its day you can, you can sometimes find some bigger fish feeding down the bottom of your peg. And I know on this peg that can happen because I mentioned at the start, there's a, it definitely shallows up onto 94. But I, th I actually think there's no bait getting down there today. So, I mean, in terms of efficiency, it couldn't be simpler really. I'm just lowering my bait in and uh, pretty much, well, getting a bite every cast. So, I suppose I'm fishing around about seven foot deep and actually where I'm fishing I think it's only about six foot deep so I'm fishing about a foot over depth at the moment and I mentioned the fact that I've got a bolt and these are all number eight shots here. I like to pretty much always shot my floats regardless of how big they are with number eights. I know that sounds like a pain but obviously you can't use uh, lead shots over a size eight now so this I find very versatile way of fishing. So I've, I can bulk it up like I can in this situation. And I've got about eight number eight shots spread out below to quite a long hook length with no shot on. And I think that just helps. What that bulk's doing is it, it's getting the bait down to sort of near the bottom and controlling quickly. And I've got a nice fall in the bottom, two or three foot, and that bottom foot with no shots on really enhances when I'm holding back. So I think the hook bait really flaps up off the bottom and then goes back down again. And that, that can be such a deadly form of presentation, particularly for big roach, when you're fishing like this with uh, a powerful peg. Obviously during the session, I'll try spreading the shots out. And I've also got another rig set up, which I'll talk about when I'm fishing with that one. But this is definitely the best rig at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should even fish a heavier float, but I have to say, I don't think it really would matter what I'm doing. There's just so many days in my peg. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> I can't complain about that because the river's just in absolutely tremendous form. And if I was fishing a match, then very quickly, I think you'd concede that it's the days that you're going to fish for and you'd uh, really concentrate on them. Well, there's a small roach. I've had quite a few of those today, as well as the better stamp roach and days. It's just fantastic to see so many different year classes of fish in the river. Well, I didn't mention the actual float that I'm using on this rod. That's a Dave Howell number one insert stick, 12 number four. And um, I do really like these sticks. I love the fact that it's got a nice thin wire stem, which provides a lot of stability when you're fishing a swim like this, which, which can be quite boily. And I also really love the insert tips. That's my favorite thing about them because I can see them really well. There's bad light today, lots of different reflections on the water. On another day, I might decide to fish a, a bigger dome top float, particularly if I was gonna drag more line on the bottom. But today that's working really well. The other rod I've set up 
It's got a slightly lighter stick, which is a 10 number four Dave Harrell. And this has got a, a dome top on. And I've set this rig and float up to fish really tight to the bank. So I've used a different shotting pattern. I've decided to spread pairs of number eight shots and then taper them down to just single number eight shots. And obviously because I'm fishing so close in, um, I'm gonna really, I don't wanna fish with a heavy stick because the heavy stick's gonna get the bait and the shot down very quickly. And because it's not so powerful close in, I don't need such a heavy float. So this floats work well as well. So I'm gonna give it a go now and just see if there's any of those better roach really hugging the bank, which is often what they do on the Y. On snaggy pegs, this, this rig works really well because obviously with it being lighter, you can almost imagine the hook bait and hook traveling over the snags. And you can actually enhance that by changing your shotting pattern and fishing with a reverse shotting pattern where you've got even less shot in the bottom third of the line. So as you can see, I'm gonna really pull this close into the bank now. Now those ducks have moved out of the way and just see if there's a better roach just hugging the bank. And that's a fish and I'm not sure if it's a roach. Might be. Or it might be another one of those big days. Oh, it is a roach. So that's kind of proof in the pudding really. Just by changing the rig and the presentation and where I was fishing it in the swim, I've got a better stump roach. What a beauty. Here's a couple of quick tips for you when you're stick float fishing. Um, I like to keep my stick floats on winders. Obviously I mentioned at the start that I shot them up with number eight. So when you're using a big stick float, it's a lot of number eights and it takes a good amount of time. So I like to prepare them at home and Actually, I, I like to join them with a knot and tailor the knot situation so that it's below the float. Um, my thinking there is, obviously, if I was to snag the bottom, sometimes, particularly on the Y, there's a lot of very snaggy pegs. If you, if you snag up on your main line, that's a weak link there and that's gonna break and you're hopefully gonna get the float back. And that's why I always put a shot just below the float. So if I do break off, that shot will hopefully stop the float from flying off as well. Well, I started bumping a few fish and sometimes that can be, obviously the hook point's gone and you've got a blunt hook. But I believe a lot of the time, the barb, because you're constantly unhooking fish, is sitting more proud out from the point. And the way to resolve that is just get some style pincers and just squeeze the barb back down again. And that can stop you from bumping fish. The main line I used today on the stick float was this 3.4 pound Pro Gold, which has a diameter of 0.17 millimeter. And the hook length was this uh, Vest Pro line in 0.125 millimeter. I've actually set two different rods up today. They're both 15 foot and there are CR10 versions, number one and number two. And um, I thought it'd be interesting to set both up They've both got the same sort of action, a lovely progressive action, but the difference is the power. There's about a 10% difference between one and two. So the number two's 10% more powerful than the number one. And uh, just helps really. Some anglers have got different preferences for the power of rod they want. And I like to use, if I'm targeting bigger roach, I do like to use a slightly softer rod. So for me, the number one's absolutely perfect. If I was fishing perhaps further out from the bank with a bigger float, using heavier floats, then I'd go for the number two. They're both extremely versatile rods and absolutely tailor-made for float fishing on rivers.
Well, that's a better quality roach, probably nudging a pound. And they had that on double caster, right tight to the bank. So I think that's going to be my tactic now for the rest of the session. I'm going to really focus my feed very close in and my tactics just to see if I can catch a bigger roach. This session has been absolutely unbelievable with the days. No matter what I do, I just can't really avoid them. And uh, I'm actually just about to run out of bait, so I think I'm gonna make this the last fish. It's been a pretty miserable afternoon as well, and the rain's set in now. But it just shows really what an amazing river the Y is. It's gotta be the best river venue in the country by far when you consider that Quality fish like that day are just totally spread throughout the length. Let's have a look at what we've caught. Well, there we go. Chappie's weighed me in, and I've got 35 pounds of prime dace and some beautiful roach. I think it just shows that it's worth going out even when the conditions aren't great in the winter, and what a prolific river the Y is. Also, Fishing the stick float has been a fantastic method today. Fishing it close to the bank has been a devastating method. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>